The Nakando Wool Mill is the oldest continuously working rural mill in the UK. The first recorded operators of the mill were William and Anne Grant. That was in 1784. They ran the walk mill in their croft or small farm, processing wool for local spinners and weavers. There were little mills like this everywhere that were serving local communities. We're talking, you know, before uh, mass communications, etc. So farmers would bring their woods here, and um, uh, it, it was local trade. And they were everywhere, but this is the last one. People would bring fleeces in, and they would take away, they'd be converted at the wool mill, and they'd be take away um, tweed, cloth, knitting yarn, whatever they wanted. Serve the local community and actually went on doing that until the 1960s. People can still remember bringing the fleeces here and taking away cloth. Most of these mills, there were quite a lot of them in North East Scotland, most of them disappeared between the two world wars. Somehow the wool mill just carried on. In the early years, almost everything was done by hand. Then, as the Industrial Revolution spread throughout the country, more and more of the work was mechanised, the giant water wheel at the heart of the process. This is an encapsulation, actually, of the history of textiles, really, um, and the way that the Industrial Revolution spread northwards and uh, the evolution of textile machinery. We took over in 1976, in fact, and um, I took over from uh, Duncan Stewart, he was 78 at the time and uh, semi-retired, should we say, still had 12 cows at the time because this was a farm. And uh, he taught me an awful lot. I mean, he was forgetting I was learning and um, he was a great man. He was a great man. I, I mean, a, uh, a solid working man uh, with uh, actually a good sense of humour. Yeah. <laughs> you come in in the morning and he's, uh, he's looking at his watch, you know, and tells you. Oh, they're too late in the morning and not, not punctual enough. I've had more holidays in the time than I had in 50 years. <laughs> As the textile process became mechanised, the tenants here would hear about it, they'd get second or third hand machinery up from Yorkshire or up from the borders, and they would extend the mill there a bit to cover the machines. These wonderful contraptions are the result of human inventiveness and robust Victorian engineering. The same machinery has continued to serve the mill's owners for almost one and a half centuries. But time takes its toll, and by the end of the 20th century, it became clear that a fundamental overhaul was needed to save the buildings and their contents for the future. The textile machinery was listed by Historic Scotland and then later on the whole site was A-listed by Historic Scotland as of international importance. The whole place was fallen to pieces, literally. So when the Cando Wool Mill Trust was set up, Hugh gave the mill to the trust and the trust started on the road to raise the money to renovate the whole place, very much in conjunction with Hugh. The Trust energetically set about drawing up conservation plans. The project only just missed out on winning a BBC competition, which would have provided much of the funding. But by this time the momentum had been built up, and just as throughout the history of the Nakando wool mill, there was no stopping it. By 2010, I think we'd got all the three and a half million pounds needed, which was pretty fantastic, and we started on the renovation process. For two years, the Trust and their contractors toiled. Machinery was meticulously taken apart, repaired and reassembled. We're just getting everything trued up and uh, get a good check through everything. You know, we've got, actually these are new bearings in here because these were shot. Others we've been luckier with. We found quite a lot of breakage that would really be due to just stress and strain. Um, quite a lot of wear. I mean, little things like this down here, you know, this is a this is a rail, this is where the individual spindles come up. I mean, there's 60 spindles right across this rail. Well, you can see, you know, these are cracked. So, we're going to make new ones of these. You've got to go through it all. This is probably one of the biggest pinions in the place. And he's fine, all except he's lost five half teeth there. 
So the trick there is we'll put little pegs in here, drill down, and then we'll braise onto that, and then we can cut them back. So we've still got half a good tooth. It's dentistry, basically. The buildings were treated to new roofs, new floors. Masonry was rebuilt. The whole architectural design team and the main contractor have done a really good job. By 2012, the bulk of the rebuilding work was complete and the wool mill was ready to begin work once again.